Good morning, everybody. Glad to be here. Hope you're having a wonderful morning, and um, again, very, very blessed to be here. So, in the moment that um, I was asked to come and speak, it was this quandary of exactly what it was that I was going to be talking about, and this kept coming up in my mind because of the experiences I've been having the past few weeks. I have a cousin that I absolutely adore. We're um, sisters from another mother, and unfortunately, she fell a couple of well, a couple of weeks ago, about six weeks ago, she fell and broke her leg in two places. Um, had to have a rod put in five pins, and she's disabled anyway. And so the situation came up where I had an opportunity. They had called me and asked me if I could come and stay with her for a couple of weeks to help her out in her healing. And at that time I was available and I was very excited about, about to be able to go and help somebody that I really care about and to have time with them. So I had to do the COVID thing. I got tested, she got tested. Um, you know, there were 10 days or 11 days that I was there at home isolating before I went. And when I arrived in her home, it was nothing like I expected it to be in that there's a group of people in that area where she lives that um, do not believe in wearing the masks, which is great. And so I have had an opportunity in this journey of mine to um, experience all sides of what's going on for us right now. And not only that, also being able to um, sit in uh, honor and respect for everybody, no matter where they're coming from. The point of this is, is that at the time we were sitting there having a conversation one day, and um, we get deep sometimes, we get funny sometimes, and then we just don't talk. But after six weeks of being with this woman, six weeks, you guys, <laughs> after being with this woman for six weeks, it was amazing. We were still talking to each other, and we still loved each other, and it was exciting. But in one of the comments that we had, I mean, one of the conversations that we had, she made this comment one day, and I don't remember exactly what we were talking about, but it was about the fact of how big is your want to. And I looked at her at that moment, and I said, wow, that's, that sounds like a talk. How big is your want to? And when I mean that how big is your want to, the question is, how important is what you're going towards? How important or how how much are you longing to be in that situation that you're willing to do whatever it takes for it to happen? How big is your want to? So a good example of that was I was at home and my cousin reached out and she said, I'm going in for surgery, I've broken my leg, and I need help. Now I understand that. Um, she has a daughter and a son-in-law and a one-and-a-half-year-old grandson, and so the family dynamics are pretty crazy. Daughter and son-in-law worked all day, so she was going to be on her own and she needed help, and I got that. And it was interesting to me because in that moment when she asked for help, I was there. I was absolutely there for her. There was nothing that I couldn't see that I could not make this happen. So how big was my want to? It was really big. I really wanted to be there for her. It was important that I was there for her. And at home right now, with things going on the way they are, as, as a life coach, as a manifestation coach, as a whatever my titles are, it's come to a pretty complete halt. And so I've had plenty of time on my hands. And so the opportunity to go there and be with her was, was profound, I thought. So it was going to be two weeks, and then it ended up being four weeks. And then it ended up being six weeks. And so as it progressed, it, it was just inviting to be able to have a husband at home that was willing to say yes, to take care of the fur babies and the animals at home that they would be taken care of. And at the same time, my needs were being met and my cousin's needs were being met. So the question is, right here, right now, how big is your want to? How big is it for you to manifest or create what it is you say you want to do or be. Now, 
That's, that's an easy question. <laughs> it's the action you have to take in order for that to happen. So, I can say as an example, I was very willing to be there for my cousin because she needed me. And right now at home, you, you know the time frame and everything going on, I'm, I'm, I'm in a space where I have the freedom to come and go. And I also know because I don't have a lot of, of work going on, um, the, the fact that I needed somewhere was huge. <laughs> it was very uh, feeding to me and to her as well. And so everything lined up. The stars lined up, the sky lined up, the um, highway lined up, everything lined up. And when I got there in Houston, the other aspect of it was it's when the snowstorm hit. And God, it was amazing because we never lost electricity or water where I was. My husband, bless his heart, he did for two or three days. But the whole process, everything that fell into place as I was going through this one concept of helping another human being fell into place as it needed to. So I got that it was okay. I got that this is where I needed to be, and my one two was big. Now, the other aspect of that is you need to take a look at, we need to look at what our one twos are, how important are they to us, and how willing are we to make them really happen. I can give you a real good example about that. <laughs> so now with everything down, um, marketing myself in my business is not a heavy-duty one-to, <laughs> just because of having to do what I have to do. And it's very tough right now with the situation being the way it is with, the, with COVID and everything. And so my energy in that area, I say I want to, but the actions are not happening as much as they were when I could go help my cousin. Does that make sense? So you have to know to take the time to look and see what it would be for you to really know how big your want to is. And with that, you also want to be able to know what it is you need to do to make that happen. Now, I don't see Jesus saying how big is your want to. I mean, the guy just walked his talk and did it, which is phenomenal. I know that some of us talk about it a lot and struggle with the actions that we need to take to have that happen. And so it's real important that we get clear, first of all, on what it is. Day-to-day -day decisions are that way as well. They're, they're that way in that just, just getting up in the morning or making decisions throughout the day of things you want to do or have to get done and such. It's real important that you know what it is that's driving you. What is that underlying peace? The songs that they sang this morning were spot on as far as being able to let go and go with the flow. Are you allowing yourself the quiet time to hear what it is that your heart really wants to do? Do you give yourself the opportunity to be able to sit and be in all the craziness that's going on out in the world and just in our, our community or just in your family unit or just in your home, do you allow yourself to be in that space that you need to be so that you can determine and define what it is that really is tugging on your heart? It's real important. So there's this guy, he dreamed about being a, a, a monk. He wanted to join a monastery. His whole life he was thinking about joining a monastery. And so he finally, he finally approached a monastery and he talked to the head monk one day. And he says, I think I want to become a monk. And so he says, what do I need to do to join? What, what can I do to become a monk and be a part of the monastery? And the abbot was talking to him and he told him, well, it is very challenging. It's, it's a very challenging um, decision, a very challenging opportunity for somebody to be able to do what needs to be done. You're only allowed to say two words every year. So you sit in the silence for a year and then when, when asked to speak, you are allowed two words. And so the man says, well, that sounds a bit extreme, but I'm willing to give it a try. And so they um, showed him to his room in the monastery, and they took him in there, and he was left to do whatever he was meant to do. He's in the silence 
for his first year, and um, he was taken to the abbot to speak his first two words, and the abbot said, you can speak, and he said, bad food. <laughs> So he went back to his room, and he sat for another year, and he and he had again was taken to the abbot and, and asked the two words that he wanted to speak, and he said hard bed. <laughs> oh yeah. So the guy was in his, you know, how big was his one two? And so another twelve months of silence passed, and was brought in again to the abbot to speak his two words, and this time the man said, I quit. <laughs> And the, and the abbot looked at him in that moment, looked into his eyes, and he said, well, it doesn't surprise me you've done nothing but complain since you've been here. <laughs> how big is your want to? How big? How, how much are you willing to do what it takes for you to be able to achieve that want to that you have? It's a challenge. I know it's a challenge. It's an opportunity, but it's also... Um, something that, that keeps us from doing what we want to do because of fear, because of not believing in ourselves, because of lack, whatever that is. Those words and those thoughts that, that consume us, that keep us from being able to be who we say we really want to be. So I guess the question today is, are you willing to take the time to do what you need to do so that you can achieve your want to? So just take a minute. What is your want to? What is your heart's desire? Is there something that's been hanging there for you? It can be small. It can be huge. It can be whatever. And if you have a way to define what that is for you or you don't, it will show up. It will show up. It shows up for you constantly. You just need to be able to be awake and, and see that it's there. That you have this opportunity I love the conversation I had with my cousin, and, and, and it's so easy because she's not she's not a good talker like I am, but when she speaks, she listen to the EF of the thing. So when she said, you know, how big is your want to? Well, that was a challenge for us the whole time we were together because she went from a cast and a walker and a wheelchair to a boot and a walker. And then now she just found out she's got another month in that boot. And every step, literally, pun intended, every step that she took, it was like a devastating uh, concept to her. She was hoping that she would be in that boot or that cast for two weeks and then she wouldn't be able to walk free. Well, obviously not. And she's doing very well. And at the same time, you guys, she has physical therapy. God, I love you. <laughs> she has physical therapy twice a week. And I'm sitting there and I watch this therapist come in and they do the exercises together. And you can tell it's making a difference. So she is asked to do those same exercises on a daily basis. Well, guess what happened? Nothing. And it's not about her. This is just an example of what can occur. She was told that she needed to do the exercises on a daily basis on her own. And I had the paper there. I set it out on the table for her. We got up and we walked around the cabinets, the cabinet counters in the kitchen. We moved her as much as I could move her. But then it was up to her to make that decision of how big her once she was. Now, every time she got news about what was going to happen next with the boot or what was going to happen with her leg and this and, and on her healing process, she was defeated. She felt a little defeated and then she'd be okay. And yet, the steps she needed to take to make it happen quicker didn't happen. And that's okay. She didn't know that she didn't know that she didn't know. <laughs> she, she knew what she wanted, but those steps in between were not happening for her. And so it's, it was amazing to be able to witness that through somebody else's process and to see where that falls into my life constantly as well. And so I had to be very aware. It was a blessing. It was really a gift. Being very aware as to what I need to do and what steps I need to take. Because if I have a big one too, and I really want to see it happen, 
then I really need to do what I need to do to make it happen. So, what steps do you need to take and how do you do that? That's a good question. <laughs> it just depends on what it is you're, you're working towards. So what would be really great, possibly, is to have an accountability person or a support person that you could contact and make weekly um, action steps and, and, you know, interact with that other person and talk to them and see, have, help, have them help you be accountable in making those steps occur. Um, support system, as you know, is very important. I think about Jesus and, and the disciples all the time and their processing and what they did and how he was. And, and, and it's just like us having to go off and be alone and process and be one with source, which he had to do constantly. But also longing for that connection with other human beings, to be there with him and to, to uh, uh, hold him accountable and to support him in his wanting. So what you want to? I wish you were here so you could shout it out. What you want to? I'd love to hear it. Put it on the messaging. What is your want to? You have a community here that loves you and wants to help you succeed in anything that you want to do. So here you are. Here's the accountability. Here's the support system. It's important that we work together. It's important that we see that each one of us has a want to and to help each other get there if they can and if you want to that's the biggest piece right there how much do you really want to be there and and that was fascinating again for me because once I got home okay wait I gotta back up real quick <laughs> you guys I was in Houston for six weeks during the snow apocalypse whatever was going on and then um Friday, I drove to Abilene from Houston. A dear lady that I'd met in Abilene when I went over there to minister, she, she reached out to me the moment I got to Abilene, and that was a big one, too. I was ministering at a church there, a Unity Church in Abilene, and she embraced me right off the bat. Well, she, she passed, and they had a huge memorial service, huge. They had a memorial service for her on Saturday, and I really wanted to be there. And then yesterday, I went from Abilene, and I came home. That was my big one, too. I want to be home. I need to be home with my husband and my fur babies that I've missed forever. So being home was a big one, too. And I went about it in a very different way than I ever imagined, but it happened. So each day and each moment and each step, what are you focused on? What is it that you want? I know everybody has something on their heart that they really desire to manifest and have come true for them. And sometimes then we get it conglomerated with all the other outside stuff going on and the worldly things going on and, and getting caught up in all the other stuff that's not even really important for us to get caught up in. So I ask you again, what are you willing to do? How are you willing to show up? What is it you want to do and be today? That's all that matters. That's all that matters. If each and every one of us was focused on the big one, you know, how big is your want to? We would really, our energy and our vibes and our love for one another would be spreading out in a whole different way. So be a part of that. Be a part of that. Just take a moment right now with me and breathe into this. As we close and go into a moment of silence and connect with the oneness of you, the oneness of who we are, and connect with your heart. breath and know that you're safe where you are, that you're loved where you are, that you're supported where you are, with the love of the infinite wisdom within you, with the power of you within you, with the pure essence love and light. And as you breathe into that, just be quiet for a moment. 
and see if there's something there for you. Take a deep breath as you come back into the space. 